welcome everybody. We're so glad that you've come back and joined us. We're doing 15 minute financial nuggets of scriptures from the Bible that and stories that that are in there that'll help you to get your finances, your life, your family situation turned around. I've got Pastor Jim with me here. Uh, we're going to be sharing again and, and we're looking forward to we're going to share today on the story that was in the Bible of Jesus feeding the 5,000. So one of the cool things about this is he didn't do it once, he did it twice. He fed 5,000 one time, the other time he fed 4,000. And so sometimes we can read through scripture and we miss it, but a lot of times God's trying to show us something. And if God does it twice, he's usually trying to get our attention and say, hey, wake up. I'm trying to show you um, how I operate. And then, because Jesus was our example on the earth, how we were to operate. So I just want to encourage you to keep your ears and your spirits open as we just kind of go back and forth and share a little bit about um, how this could impact your life today. What, when, you, uh, when, when you heard that story when Jesus called in and go ahead and share some of the story but what 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 got your attention or or what jumped out at you when you when you looked at those stories well it's the entire story when you see something that we naturally think would be impossible to do jesus always proves that the impossible becomes his possible and so that story is always fascinating to me jesus just crossed the sea of galilee and he noticed that there was a large crowd that was following him. And uh, the crowd was following him because they seen the miracles that Jesus had performed. Mm -hmm. And in the book of John 6, 5 through 13, it says this, And Jesus saw the great company come unto him, and he said to Philip, Where are we going to get enough bread that these mm -hmm. people can eat? First of all, we can understand that Jesus, whenever he asks a question in the Bible, Jesus already knows the answer yes, to the questions. Yes, he does. And the reason that he asked the question is he wants to make a very ministry point in his teaching the disciples and teaching us today. Where are we going to get enough bread to eat? And so that question was answered by Philip. He said, 200 penny worth is not sufficient to feed them, even if they was to take a little. In other words... Philip is looking at his treasury to decide what Jesus could do. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, there's many churches today that whenever a ministry is brought to their attention, for example, if um, um, around Thanksgiving time, we, uh, there's a suggestion to buy turkeys for everybody. We need three, four hundred turkeys for um, to feed people. Or Christmas time to buy toys for the for children that don't have toys in Christmas time. Many churches, the first place they go and look to see if they can do that ministry is to their treasury. Mm -hmm. And if there's not enough money in the treasury, and they decide, well, we don't have enough money and we can't do it. So in other words, what was happening? They was depending more upon their money mm -hmm. than they was upon Jesus. Yes. And so uh, these churches that are centralized this way is more interesting. As long as they got the money to pay the pastor's bills, to pay for the um, bills around the um, uh, church and so forth, they're satisfied with that. But these churches never, ever, ever grow and eventually falter and fail. Now, the churches that prosper are the ones when a ministry is brought to them like this. Instead of going to the treasury to see how much money they had to see if they can afford it, they go to their knees mm. to see if it was Jesus that mm. was leading them. And if Jesus is leading you to do a ministry, then he makes sure that the money's in the treasury. Yes. So we come into the church in order to learn and get educated, but our ministry is outside the church. It's mm -hmm. to other people. And so the first place we should go is to Jesus and yes. ask him. So Philip was saying it right there, and there wasn't enough money to, 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 to buy the bread. You know, one of the things I noticed that even with Jesus, though, when they asked to feed them, and Jesus tells his disciples, why don't you feed them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so can you imagine this? 
they're looking around, they're thinking like, now how are we going to do this? And Jesus looks at them, he taps them, he says, you go ahead and take care of it. <laughs> now, I, I, I think they felt like they probably got pushed into the deep end. Like, this is way over my pay grade, I, my over my ability. I'm not quite sure how to handle this. And it's interesting because Jesus says, do, does anybody have anything to eat? So what did he do? He took up an offering. It's interesting. In the time of need, uh, they, Jesus says, does anybody have anything to give? Now, my question to you, if there were 5,000 men there, they never counted the women and children. So there was probably 25,000 people there. Mm-hmm. His interesting thing is there was only one kid who gave up his lunch. Mm-hmm. His mom packed him a lunch and he was prepared to, it took a child because I'm sure some other Jewish mamas that were there had packed something as well, but they weren't prepared to give it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this young guy was prepared to give it up. And the interesting thing that happened was Jesus took that. The Bible says he lays his hands on it. He looks up to heaven and asks God to bless it. Mm-hmm. When, it when God blesses things, they automatically multiply. Yeah. We have a tendency to look at everything in a natural way. Though. Yes. Before we look at it in a spiritual way. It's a natural thing to us because we're walking along these bodies and it's always going to be natural to us. Yes. But we have to learn to look at it in that way that you're referring to, the spiritual side. In verse 8 and 9, Andrew said there's a young lad here, the boy that you're talking yeah. about, with five loaves and two fishes. He said, but what are they? And he asked the question, what are they among so many people? And um, so Andrew was looking at the food supply to decide if there was yeah. enough, and naturally there wasn't enough of food supply. Uh, let's say, for example, that you or I or anybody out there would come home from church on Sunday morning and say, Honey, I almost forgot, and say to our wife, yeah. Honey, I almost forgot I invited 5,000 people to lunch today. <laughs> Is there enough here? How long would you be married, though? <laughs> <laughs> She we tried can, that trick. We can live in her happy home real quick. <laughs> yeah. So, in other words, what's the day? It, when we say something like that, we had better make sure that Jesus told us to do yeah. that. So we do have somebody to blame it on. That yeah. we're blaming it on Jesus. He told us to do it. It was his idea. It was it was his idea. Yeah. And so it's natural for us to look to the food supply to decide. But whenever Jesus gets involved, it is different. Yes. When he set 5,000 people down at the table, and this young lad that you had mentioned, he's the only one out of 5,000 people that had enough sense to bring his lunch. (laughs) And I didn't understand that. And also, in the scripture, there is nothing that I see in the scripture where when this Jesus, this young lad was asked to give up his lunch, did he ever ask the disciples, hey, if I give you my lunch, what am I going to eat? He never... He never questioned that, or he never said, "No, I'm not going to give you my lunch." What you, what, and so get, get your own. Get, yeah. get get your own lunch. He never asked that question. So whenever it was given to Jesus, because Jesus asked for it, he gave it without question. And that's what fascinates me more about this young lad. Because if we were adults, we'd ask a hundred questions. Yes, wouldn't we? Yeah, well, that would be the smart thing to do because you don't just jump into anything without asking a lot of questions. <laughs> Except for when we're with God, He's saying, Do you trust me? And you're thinking, Well, of course I do, but I'm still going to ask you questions. <laughs> so if God really has the answers to our problems and our situations, like feeding those five or 20,000 or whatever amount of people it was, and it never made him nervous. Jesus never, you notice it never said Jesus was pacing around wondering, I hope my dad can pull this off. Mm-hmm. I hope things are going to be okay. Man, what is really going to happen to me next week or next month if I, this doesn't look, how, how is my reputation going to look if the God doesn't pull this off for me? Uh, he never, he never even uh, put any thought to that. In that he would have been concerned or panicked or worried that God wouldn't show up and do something. Mm-hmm. But you know, the interesting thing is this. The kid hands his lunch over, some bread and some fish. Mm-hmm. What did they eat? What did everybody eat until they were fully satisfied? Bread and fish. Why? 
Why well, didn't they have turkey dinners instead or, or, or uh, fish dinners or will you take your pick? Take your pick out of all of it because God will always multiply what's in your hand. Whatever you sow, that you'll also reap. So whatever you plant in there, you're going to see that breakthrough. The, the bread and the fish was what they had. That's it. That was the seed. Us to give what we don't have. Only what we have. Absolutely. So now the key to the multiplication that's we is when Jesus took the bread, the first thing he did with it was what? He broke it. He blessed it. It's his blessings upon the bread that fed the 5,000. Yes. They caused enough bread to feed the 5,000 people. Now, it, to follow through with a question that you ask, the disciples was following through and doing what Jesus told them to do. Yes. So they started distributing the bread. And so when they started distributing the bread, what do you think was going through their mind? You think, oh my goodness, this is enough to feed four people. After that, what are we going to do? Yeah. And these questions have probably gone through the disciples' minds. Yes. Because they really didn't know what Jesus was going to do. And then what happened was, was something very miraculous. Every time somebody took a piece of bread out and broke it, you know, took a fish out, and it was the basket was filled back up again. Yeah. Kept filling back up until everybody was full. And so whenever we give, whenever we give to Jesus, whenever we give to a ministry, we're given to Jesus because Jesus says, whatever you've done to the least of me, these you've done to me, my brother. Yeah. And so whenever we give to a ministry, we're actually laying the money in the hands of Jesus and asking Jesus to bless it. And when he blesses it, he blesses the ministry. And he also blesses those in the service. Yes. And so um, everybody ate smorgasbord style. Yeah. They wasn't starving. Until they were full. So like you mentioned, it doesn't make any difference whether there was 5,000, 7,000, 8,000. Jesus could have still kept multiplying that feed and that uh, fishes and the bread until everybody was filled and full. So who was blessed as a result of it? Everybody. Everybody. So first of all, that gift, what it meant was this. It was enough to feed the 5,000. Jesus multiplied it enough yeah. to feed the 5,000. And they fed, the, they ate until they were full. Yeah. Also, the disciples that was following Jesus' instructions on feeding the 5,000 and distributing to them, they ate until they was full. Yes. After the 5,000 was fed, there's 12 baskets left over, enough to feed the disciples and the boy. Yeah. And so the disciples ate because they was part of the ministry and following Jesus' instructions. And also, then there was enough food returned unto the boy, pressed down, shaken together. And right. running over. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how God works through this. We're going to have to do a part two to this because we're. this is one of those stories when you get into it, there's just so much meat. And uh, we're going to stay, uh, we want you to come back next week. We're going to have part two of this because we want to get in and talk about the remnants that were left over. We want to talk about some of the, the, the process of how this works. But one of the things you have to know that when you give to God, God is the one that multiplies. Hey. Just like he multiplied the, 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 the loaves and the fishes in the story, didn't do it once, did it twice. He's trying to show us something that take your hands. When I ask you to do something, just step in. I'm, trust me, I've got you. And that's not an easy thing for any of us to ever do because it's not comfortable. God has terrible timing. Why would he ask me now? I'm in the worst time. I mean, there's a pandemic going on. Don't you know how bad it is right now, God? <laughs> it's like... We don't even think that God is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, that he's missed it. But yet he's got each and every one of us, and he cares about us, and he wants to promote us in every in every area of our lives. And so, guys, we're going to go, um, we're going to pray here with you real quick. Uh, but I want you to come back for part two on this, because there's just so much more we want to share. And... So your life gets a breakthrough. But if you need a financial miracle or any miracle, just say, God, that's me. I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each person that's listening and watching. God, they need a supernatural touch from you, Lord. I pray that you just meet them right where they're at. Touch their lives in a real and a tangible way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be Amen. blessed. Join us back for your 15 minutes of financial nuggets.
part two.